The clock is ticking. It's been a long time since I've worked on the Porsche 928 or given an update. A lot of things going on. Suffice it to say, with competing priorities throughout the summer, the car just uh, pretty much sat idle. Now with winter finally uh, approaching here in mid-November, I'm going to put a dedicated focus on getting this car ready for Amelia Island 2022. So moving forward, I, this is my commitment to work on the car much more than I have been, which is to say not at all, and uh, providing at least one video a week of what I've been working on on it, and uh, just trying to move forward to get the car ready and make it my second daily driver. So this latest installment is what I went through to install the headlight switch and the headlight motor relay on the 928. The switch was working intermittently. And if I hold up the old one here, maybe tough to see, but you can kind of see the terminals are corroded. This is a 40-year-old part. So these are a known fault issue in the 928s. So I went ahead and ordered a new one, a five-week lead time from Germany. Welcome to 2021. And replacement headlight relay, FCP Euro, out of Connecticut, had a replacement in stock, and that was only a two-day lead time. So it was good there. So without further ado, let me take you through what I went through with the headlight switch. All right, with any electrical work on a car, you need to disconnect the battery first, the negative ground terminal. And that's what I'm doing here. If you're not familiar with it, the battery is located in the rear hatch area. So I did that. And now I'll just stop it real quick here. In the middle of this video, you can see the, the dash pod. All of that white stuff is silicone. That's left over from the dash cap that used to be on um, both the dash pod the instrument panel pod and the and the dashboard i've removed that and i'll have an update on i have all the materials on order and those should be in uh, very soon and we'll have upcoming videos on what it's going to take to do that but anyway let's focus on the light switch right now one other caveat before we get into the video you'll see uh, my arms are fairly red and scarred up a little bit i apologize uh, in october i came down with a bad case of poison oak from doing some gardening so i was in the thick of uh, healing from that while it was, this video was being taken uh, i'm pleased to report that i'm finally uh, recovering from that but uh, i apologize if uh, my hands look a little and my forearms look a little scary in this video All right, first thing you see me do is pop off the what is the light switch cap and that just fits into the main part of the light switch only goes in one way now what you need once you pull that out on both sides of this are the tabs that hold that into the dash the instrument binnacle so you need to use a screwdriver to work those and that's exactly what you're seeing me do here just a matter of using those two screwdrivers flat bladed to work those and then once i got one of the tabs out I used the uh, screwdriver to get behind the other one and pull it out. Now, there's a good shot. Now I've managed to get the tabs. Now it was a matter of what I discovered is that the wiring was holding it back in the dashboard socket. So there's there's a shot. So unfortunately, what happened there was imagine if you will, this is the this is the piece where all of the wires come in and the metal tabs that you'll see shortly plugs in like so. So you can imagine. 10 wires coming in here with their metal clips and the so what happened what you saw me just do right there was i literally pulled out the switch when i had hoped this whole assembly would come out of the hole with the wiring there and then i could grab it but being it's 40 years old that didn't happen light switch comes out now i've got this stuck behind the dashboard so what do i do so here i am trying to use my extra long needle nose pliers trying to get at that piece and it just was a futile effort uh, I could not get the angle well enough to grab onto this piece uh, at any point 
Uh, the hole was just too small for the length of the uh, needle nose pliers I needed. So I ended up realizing that I could probably take an extra long screwdriver from the bottom of the dash binnacle. So here I am taking the bottom trim cover off. That would facilitate more access to the, to the binnacle, or at least get a screwdriver up above, and then I could get behind this piece to hold it in place or pull it out more uh, through the dashboard. That was my intent. There you, there you see me. Here's a close-up of that piece, and I'm trying to get it uh, back, so I was hoping I could just put the new switch in and be done with it. But what I'm finding in this shot is now, as I put the new switch in, I was actually pushing out the wiring in this piece. So here's a close-up. I decided that for better reliability and uh, to ensure all the switch would work, I eliminated this piece and put shrink tubing around all 10 of the wires and matched them up correctly and then plugged them directly into the new switch. Very cumbersome job. Wish I didn't have to do it, but the way this was working, and, and I at that point thought this might be the problem with my intermittent uh, usage of the light. So here I am uh, working like a surgeon to put shrink tubing on each wire. And again, it's very, very tight fit. Just a slow go. I had a wiring diagram. Just had to slowly work each piece on the back side of the light switch. Now, with all of those on correctly, and I validated that all of the light, the uh, wiring was correct, I used a hair dryer to shrink the tubing onto the wires to give a nice uh, protective bond um, so that nothing shorts in the back side of the dashboard. And then just one more uh, round of electrical tape just to make sure everything was good before I pushed the switch back into its place. So unfortunately, here I am trying to work the switch and it was not working. That frustration in, now I moved my attention to putting in the new headlight motor relay. This is the lower footwell on the passenger side where this fuse block is located. And you can see I'm, I'm comparing the plug-in for the relay here. I, I like to spray a little CRC terminal cleaner in and put the new re relay in. And now everything's in place. So at that point, the headlight switch still was not working and I still had brake lights out. I literally put the car back up on the lift that you see behind me. Um, the following day, I lowered the car, wanted to take it around, warm it up a little bit uh, because I don't have brake lights when the, when the, um, if the headlight switch is not working, I don't have brake lights either. I was hoping between the replacement of the headlight switch and that headlight motor switch, motor relay, that they would start working. Now, oddly enough, the next day, I lowered the car off of the lift, pulled it outside, and everything seemed to be working great. I actually took it for a ride for about five miles or so around here, and the headlights turned them on off maybe a couple dozen times. Worked like a charm. Everything was working. Stop lights were working. I pull the car back up on the ramp, and I get the warning message again. So I'm just not sure what's going on with that. Not sure what's going on with that, but enough is enough. On Wednesday, I'm going to work on the car, and I'm going to get that issue resolved once and for all because I really have hesitated driving the car at all with the, because there's no brake lights. <laughs> so I need to get that fixed uh, and make sure I have at least those lights working reliably that I can go around town, run a few errands with the car and, and not run into this issue where I don't have brake lights. So that's going to be Wednesday's assignment. And I hope to have a resolution on that for you before the end of the week. In other news, Classic Nine Industries you recall in an earlier video, they were on back order for most of the summer and were not even taking orders for new materials. They were busy redesigning their website and they had such a backlog of, uh, of orders that um, they said they would be back online by June. It ended up being mid-August. Fast forward to October and I finally got around to ordering the materials I needed. That includes uh, brand new carpeting for the rear hatch area, the and then the main floor areas and all of the other glued in pieces the rocker panels and that i'm leaving in i'm just going to steam clean and but uh, i'll have the main the main pieces will be brand new and they'll integrate well at classic nines recommendation i bought replacement dash pad material the replacement instrument binnacle material and the 
center council material. The recommendation was there was no way they would be able to get it the center council to match. So they recommended just getting everything so it would be a nice, perfect, integrated um, matching system. So, so I should be seeing that stuff appear here sometime in early December, which would give me the balance of December and the holidays to um, get the dashboard upgraded and get the interior all fine. I'm hoping that uh, before, before January 1st, I have the interior all put back together and I'm focusing my efforts on just getting the car uh, mechanically ready for uh, long-term drives. So Stay tuned for another video for later this week. I'll keep you posted as things move on. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, that helps uh, that helps with the channel growth. And um, it also alerts you every time I put a new video on here. So thank you for watching. Stay safe. And we'll see you soon.